a great pleasure to hear her uh, orchid from the very famous city of uh, Cordoba, as we discussed yesterday. She is going to uh, tell us about. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. The stability of Alfred Mandel. Okay. Um, okay. Many thanks for the invitation. Yeah, in the web page it says FIU, but no, I'm not from the studio. I'm just visiting one. Well, just temporary. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm from Cordoba, Argentina. Um, okay, so um, let, let's start with the, with the differentiable manifold. dimension n also we have a let's say compact and take the space of all Riemannian metrics on n okay. This is a huge eh, this is a monster space. So it's an invariant for M. Uh, but this is still a, a manifold of, of infinite dimension. Okay, this is actually an open cone in in, in the vector space of all symmetric two sensors. Okay. So um, Actually, it was Hilbert in 15 or so that considered the, the, the simplest curvature functional okay, on, on this space. You, for each Riemannian metric, you have sectional curvature, okay? Uh, which is a well a, a generalization of a Gauss curvature of, of a surface, yeah. and but that gives you like a well a, a four a four tensor, very very complicated, and then you start to average, you get the Ricci tensor, which is a symmetric bilinear form, each form, and then you can still average that and you uh, obtain the scalar curvature. It's just a number at each point of the manifold, the scalar curvature of a Riemannian metric. But then you can consider the following functional. It's called the total scalar curvature functional. And associate to each metric only a, a number, which is well, you take the, the scalar curvature at each point and integrate on M with respect to the volume defined by G. Okay, this is the total scalar curvature function. And we agree, I mean, that this is the simplest function you, you can define on, on, on M. And prove, Hilbert proved that the, the the critical points of this function in the, in the I mean this this, this space is, is so complicated that that that, uh, that would, we would like to 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 look to find special distinguished metrics for each n so you you can use it as as invariant uh, so there is a famous question, is it got like a best book, right? in the introduction of best book, start, this is 85, with, with this very natural question, and what, what's the best Riemannian method you can have on, on a given differential line? Uh, and so 
the critical points of this functional are, are candidates and are precisely Einstein metrics. Okay, so the critical points of this total scalar curvature, you, you have to, to restrict to volume one because it's, it's homogeneous. You can restrict to volume one to get critical points. Remaining metrics of volume one. And so these are precisely the Einstein metrics. Einstein mean that this rich tensor, which is the symmetric two tensor, is precise is, is the rich curvature is closure. So this tensor is a multiple, say row of the metric. Okay, so um, <clears throat> then once you have this, uh, you you may ask, given an, an Einstein manifold, I mean the the so what what you want to study here is is once you have this candidate for a canonical metric to a given M, then the, the, the natural questions are existence, no? existence, uh, classification, and stability. Uh, well, let's say first uh, rigidity. Rigidity, okay? you say that the, an Einstein metric is rigid if it is isolated. I think that this model is based consistent. Yeah, well. yeah. Um, isolated up to isometric scale. Okay. Uh, yeah, you have the group of, of diffeomorphism of M acting here by pullback and also scaling. <clears throat> and so these are the, the natural questions. For instance, existence, it is unknown if every M of dimension at least five admits an Einstein metric, whether it admits or not. It's still open. From dimension five and above, open the, the existence. Okay. And, and okay, classification of course up to up to certain constraints. Uh, the, the the assumption we, we will talk today is is homogeneous. Okay? When a group is acting transitively, we will work on the on the on the space of G invariant metrics, which will take us to a very say algebraic algebra minded <laughs> a, a viewpoint. Because well, representation theory and lead theory will be very involved in, in all the geometric questions. But okay, then uh, to talk about the, the the stability, I mean, once you have a critical point, of course you may ask what kind of critical point? This is a local max, local mean, a saddle point. It's in calculus, and then you need then to understand the the tangent space of this monster. So take a Riemannian metric G, and so the tangent space of M is given by first you 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 take all the derivatives with respect to all fields. Of the metric, these are like the trivial variations because this is precisely the the tangent space of this orbit, the orbit of all metric which are isometric to G. Okay, so that's. Trivial part. Then 
you you have all conformal all conformal uh, the tangent space of all conformal metrics to G, okay? all the all the multiples of G. These are all infinite dimensional vector spaces. And then you have this, the, the, the most interesting part, the most, say, uh, uh, mystery, mysterious, uh, mysterious part, is this that we, we can call T-T tensors. This one T is for transverse, which means transverse to here, which is which is equivalent to uh, divergence free symmetric two tensors. Recall that this is just the vector space of all symmetric two tensors. Recall that this is an open cone here. So we are decomposing the symmetric two tensors. And so these are transverse is divergence free symmetric two tensors, and the other T, T is trace free. And so you get this decomposition, which is a orthogonal with respect to the, the corresponding L2 metric, and also is orthogonal with respect to the, the Hessian, the second derivative of, of this functional, which is what we need to, to analyze the type of critical points. Okay, so um, <clears throat> what you have, what we have here is that of course, here the second derivative of this scalar curvature functional uh, at G is uh, zero because these are the trivial variations. Okay. okay. Here it's, it's not hard to see that the, the Hessian is positive. So all these curves are, are all like local minima. And here is where the interesting part is. Uh, it's not defined. De definite here the, the, the second derivative, but you know that here the 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 nullity plus the co-index is fine. Okay, this is a famous result by independently by, by Berger. Uh, and Koizen. Okay, so if we like restrict the functional to the space with this tangent space, then you you will we, it, it will be possible to have a local max, let's say, when this is zero. And this part of the tangent space is not any, it's precisely the tangent space of the, <coughs> the subspace of all constant scalar curvature metrics. Okay? So we have this. This part TT tensor plus the trivial is precisely the tangent space of the constant. The metrics that 
that the scalar curvature is constant. Okay. And so this is saying that, okay, it's, it's like the Einstein matrix here, but the Einstein matrix actually are, are automatically here. But the, the functional here is like a, an Einstein metric is has has the I mean it's possible for an Einstein metric to be a local mass. <laughs> and that's that's the question. When when we started to study this problem, I should say that this is joint work with Cynthia Wheel. which is here, and Emilio Lauret. This is my brother. All this is like, a, a, it was in 2021, 20, 20, 20, it's like a pandemic research. This is my brother and this is my wife. <laughs> we are only six mathematicians in the family. <laughs> And when we started to, to, to study this, the, 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 the question was the following. I mean, uh, are there local max for for the, the Hilbert functional, actually other than, other than some uh, symmetric spaces. This was the big question. Uh, not every symmetric space is a local mass, but some of them are. But these were the, the only examples. So it's like local max, which is when this is this is not only final but zero. Okay, when the the the, the 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 metric is stable, uh, uh, would be really really distinguished as among Einstein metrics. Okay. okay. Then, um, <clears throat> so let me if you have an Einstein metric with constant rho, let's say rho, then the <coughs> The second derivative has this very nice formula. In the direction G is precisely two rho by the identity, so this, this will be the Hessian. Two For all G, T, 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 T. Okay? This is really the Hessian at, an, at an Einstein metric G. Well, this is the famous Lignerowicz. Lignerowicz. Okay. Laplace, Lignerau is Laplace. Okay. It's a, the, the, then we are interested in the spectrum. Okay? 
to decide the stability type of a, of a, of a critical point. But, well, this is very complicated. This is known the, 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 the minimum eigenvalue, right? it's called lambda L, the minimum eigenvalue, minimum of a spectrum of Lignerowicz is known only for very, very few and special methods. So it's, it's a very nice equation, but uh, very, very hard to, to apply. Use. Okay. Uh, so let me. But then, what what are we looking uh, for? For the, if we are looking this local mass, you we need that this will be negative, defined, definite, and so we are looking for when two row. Two row less than lambda L imply that G is a local mass. Okay. Uh, hi. Does, yeah. does the, the range of the symmetric space play some role on this? Uh, no, no. Some, some. These are compact symmetric spaces. Ah, okay. but, uh, So let, let me <coughs> write here a, a figure. I mean, we have the stable is our main interest. So this is two row less than lambda L. So a bin in 68 proved that stable implies that G is a local max of the Hilbert action on C1. Also, we know other the Another application of, of stability is that, uh, of course, implies that is non-degenerate. It's non-degenerate, the critical point. And so COISO proved that this implies rigidity. Okay. Then a very nice relationship with the with the Ricci flow theory is that new stable where new is this famous Perelman uh, Perelman uh, new entropy functional which is the, the key functional to, to prove the, the, the Poincare conjectures and, and by Perelman. Which is that, that, I mean, it is the, the functional who, who is really the, the increasing along the Ricci flow. Right? And if it is not, it's if and only if it's a, it's a Ricci solid. No? Uh, implies. Uh, stable but here then you 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 need this this and also you need this part the conformal part which is that two row is less than uh, let's say the first eigen value of, of the Laplacian operation the usual and you also have here that Ricci flow dynamical is 
stability implies new stability. Okay. So if you get a metric which is not stable, then it's not null stable, and the Ricci flow, there is an, an ancient Ricci flow solution emerging from the metric and going away. Okay, so uh, let's go then to the <clears throat> to our setting, which is the homogeneous setting. Okay. So let's assume that we have the compact Lie group acting transitively. On M, and let's then consider everything will be G invariant from now on. Okay, all the metrics, all the tensors. Let's go into the setting of G invariant geometry on M for this transitive compact degree. So first. What you have is, is this G is giving you a presentation of M as a homogeneous space. Where this K is the isotropy at some point, any point. And now you have that, so the G invariant matrix Riemannian matrix is a finite dimensional mean manifold, a manifold, sorry, where n is the dimension of f. So it's a, it's a finite dimensional manifold, so we, we don't have to deal with infinite dimensional things anymore. And one is when the when the space is called isotropy reducible. So the, the G invariant geometry is, is really there is only one metric. Yeah, it's, it's really like nothing at this point. I mean the, we can consider now the stellar temperature on the space of G invariant metrics of volume one. Recall that if the metric is G invariant, of course it's homogeneous and then the is constant scalar character. So this space is contained contained here. And so if you consider this functional, of course the critical points are precisely Einstein metrics. G invariant Einstein metrics. Okay. Moreover, the, the, the gradient of this function is precisely minus the rich tensor. So the, the gradient flow is precisely the rich flow. Okay, so in, in this situation, uh, to, to start with some algebra, you have this G, take the Lie algebra, take the Lie algebra of K, and so the complement here will be precisely identified with the tangent space at the origin point. Okay. And so in, in this P here is acting K, but just the adjoint representation. 
And so if you if we decompose P as a as a as a K representation in irreducibles, then it's like the, the core, the, the, the heart of the geometry of, of M, the G invariant geometry, is in this representation. Any geometric structure you you want to put on M, which is G invariant, what you need is, is a tensor here, say a metric, say a J, J map, a complex structure, a symplectic structure. It has to be K invariant. So it's, it's like this representation, we have, you have to deal with this to, to get G, any G invariant uh, geometric structure. And of course, when this R is, is big and when you have equivalent here representations, it could be very, very complicated. Very complicated. Okay. So the first uh, result we proved with, with Cynthia was a formula for the Lignerovich Laplacian in terms of the structural constants of the Lie algebra. Okay, so we have this theorem. Is I I I. I don't want to write the formula because it's complicated, but it's a formula for now we have this Lignerovich Laplacian, but to study the G invariant setting, we only need symmetric two tensors uh, G invariant. Okay? So we only need symmetric two tensors on P. As I said, add k invariant. So this is a finite dimension in vector space. And to study the stability of Einstein of G invariant and Einstein metric, we need a first eigenvalue of this operator. So we obtain a, a formula in terms of the structural constants. Of the Lie algebra. So you have the, the D bracket of G restricted to P, and you get all the, the, the structural constants in terms of a G orthonormal basis. Okay. And actually, the structural constant is with respect to any B invariant, B invariant metric. And this was very useful because uh, the Einstein equations in this setting are in terms of these structural constants. Okay? So in all the papers from the 80s, let's say 200 papers, uh, studying the existence of Einstein metric of these homogeneous spaces, most of them they use they, they, they have to compute these structural constants to get the Einstein metric. So we were able to use all that work by many people data, to study the stability of all these Einstein metrics, but the stability restricted to, the, to this G invariant set. Your homogeneous space has no hypothesis such as flaggy manifolds, it's general homogeneous space. Yeah, yeah, it's just general. No, it doesn't have to be flag. No. We, we study flag yeah. with, with second vector number one and one. Yeah. But then let, let's say that in this. I mean, in, in this setting, then what we have is 
when it is lo a local mass, we call G stable. G stable means that two rho is less than now. Let's call lambda LG to the minimum eigenvalue of this operator. Okay. Of course, it's also an eigenvalue of, of the general linear of which. So it's, it's a bound for this number, very, very difficult to compute. Okay, okay. so uh, in this case, of course, you, you, you also have that if it is stable, so the second derivative is, is negative, definite, you get the local max, but now it's a local max of a scalar restricted to the set of G invariant metrics. Okay. But the, the, the interesting part is of course that, that is a is a necessary con condition. It's an abstraction for the, the Einstein the G invariant Einstein me to be stab stable in the general case. And we notice that even these metrics were, were they, they were not uh, studied. I mean, there were no, no examples in the literature of G stable, not even G stable. So it's like we were very far from this question. And so we, we with this formula and a lot of actually representation theory, we we started to to compute the stability types of of G invariant. Uh, Einstein metrics, no. Okay, so uh, in this case also, it's easy to see that G stable implies G rigid, and this is uh, good because one of the one one of the uh, main problems in this setting of homogeneous Einstein metrics is if the if the say the, the set of Einstein metrics of volume one on G over K for a given a fixed homogeneous space if this is finite of course up to up to isometry and scaling if this is finite or not. Actually, it's not conjecture, it's, it's a question. But uh, yeah, it, it is a conjecture. It was conjectured by by Wang, Christopher Bem, Mackenzie Wang, and Ziller. At least in the in the case when the isotropy representation is multiplicity free. Multiplicity free. But anyway, it's not known in any case. So, so this implication can be used to try to prove, at least in some cases, this, because they prove that this space is compact. So to say that it's finite is if and only if each point is isolated. So the, it's if and only if each point is rigid. Of course, the, the, the converse is, is not true in, in principle, but no example is, is known. Okay, so then uh, another another application I wanted to mention of this G G invariant setting is that you see all these implications here. So if you get a metric, which is, if G is G unstable, so it's because you found a direction, G 
g such that the second derivative is positive. Okay. But of course, you are proving that this unstable in the general, from the general point of view, because that symmetric to tensor is g invariant, but this is symmetric to tensor. And then you are proving that it's not stable for Perelman, and also then only by proving with some algebra that is unstable, g unstable, then you are proving that all this very nice, this rich flow, let's say, unstable, which is a, I don't know, very important for, for rich flow people to know examples of this. Okay, so, <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to talk about only one case, one of uh, our results, which is which concerns a standard matrix. Okay? So let me. <coughs> Is the tangent space? Well, I can. This this part is very classical, huh? very nice reference for for this is the best book. R to S, which is not a, it's a school, Burbaki, not a person. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so when when G is semi simple, compact semi simple, then you have the what is semi simple is if and only if the killing form minus the killing form is positive. It's an inner product. It's positively defined. Okay, definitely. So this inner product, which will be of course k invariant here because it's g invariant, defines like a canonical G invariant metric on the homogeneous space G over K called the standard metric. Let's denote it so this is like a, we start to I don't know mix the algebraic side with the geometric side. I mean the killing form in principle is, is very nice from G theory but why it has to be nice as a Riemannian metric, well, because it should be, right? I mean, <laughs> but okay, it's, it's one metric which is attached to one of each of these homogeneous spaces, and so um, it is Einstein. If and only if the Casimir operator is a multiple kappa times the identity is a multiple of the identity. Okay. What is this Casimir operator? Is the Casimir operator of Z. I'm calling Z to this isotropy representation. Okay. For any representation of say a compact D group or a finite dimensional vector space, you have this Casimir, which is just minus the sum of all of, of the square of some orthonormal basis. This will be an orthonormal basis with respect to the killing form. Okay. 
Okay. You take an orthogonal basis of, of, of the Lie algebra of the group which is acting, and take minus the sum of the square of, 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 of the actions. That's a, okay, a Casimir operator that we used in, in representation theory. Okay, so <coughs> this is not hard to see that you, you need this. Because the Casimir operator will be like a, on, on each of these irreducible parts will be a multiple because this commutes with the action of K, with the action of the representation is also known to be non-negative. And so on each irreducible sub-representation will be a multiple when, when what you are asking here to get Einstein, to get the standard metric Einstein, is that all the multiples be the same. They're very strong from the point of view of representation theory. But, of course, if this, if this representation is irreducible, if it is irreducible, these are called isotropy reducible homogeneous spaces were classified by Joe Wolf in the 60s. And then this implies this, of course. But there are some <coughs> one ancillary also in the 80s, they give a classification of the homogeneous spaces with G simple uh, on the of the homogeneous spaces satisfying this. Uh, really tour the force of, of representation theory to classify this because I mean the jungle of all homogeneous spaces is, is huge and well they got the uh, tables uh, 12 families infinite families plus uh, 22 individual example isolated example Okay, so we wanted to start with, with this standard metric in the case of the Einstein, which are a lot of cases because the isotropy reducible, you also get tables, many tables. You, you have here, for instance, also the irreducible symmetric spaces, all the tables of that. So many, many tables from the books. And well, we we studied, uh, uh, before continue, I would like to to, to state a, a, a conjecture because after all these years, this is still has possibility to be true. The, the difference between the general case and the, and the G invariant case seems like a I mean, we, we, may, we, we may conjecture the following. If you have a homogeneous space, which is not isotropy reducible, so the dimension of G invariant matrix of volume 1 is possible. So otherwise, in the reducible case, it's just one point. So the G stability makes no sense. If the G stability makes sense, then it seems that the following is true. That if G is G stable, an Einstein metric G stable, then is stable from the general point of view. Okay, so it's like, or equivalently, if there is an unstable direction, 
then there must be a G invariant on Stegel direction. It's like a, maybe it's too optimistic, but uh, it's like the everything must stay in the category you are. You are in the G invariant setting, then the stability should should be explained in the G invariant setting. And up to now, up to a lot of work and, and by many other people about the general case and the G state, the G invariant case, no counterexample is, is known. So any unstable direction, there are unstable direction which are not G invariant, but if there is one, there is always a G invariant. Okay. So that's, a, that's an open problem. And okay, so we studied this um, the, the stability of this standard Einstein metric, and let me. First of all, the Lignerovic, the, the, the Lignerovic Laplacian, since the metric is nice, it has a, this formula. Recall that the Lignerovic Laplacian takes a symmetric operator, P invariant, on P, and gives you another symmetric operator. Well, it's simply given by this. This follows from the formula we proved with, with Cynthia. Where xy is an orthonormal basis of P. Also GB, orthonormal basis of P. Okay? So, It looks like the Casimir. Okay. It looks like the Casimir for some representation. But the problem, of course, is that P is not a D algebra. Okay. P is not a D algebra. We have here the, the decomposition. G is a D algebra, K is a D algebra, but P is. So if P were a D algebra, I mean, if K would, is zero, if K is zero, if you have just a D group, and then you are studying left invariant metrics on the compact D group, then it is, yes, it is the Casimir operator of the following representation, which is very well known, is the representation on, on sim of G. which is just this. Okay? We call that add x, since the standard metric is B invariant, because it's the killing form. Add x is a skew symmetric. So if you take the Lee bracket of a skew symmetric map with a symmetric map, you get again a symmetric map. And this is a representation okay, on, on sim of G attached to the representation, the adjoint representation on G. Just that. And so for this tau, then you can take the Casimir operator, C tau, very well known, which goes from symmetric of G on symmetric of G. And it is, what is the formula? It's minus the sum of all tau. We have to join the basis of, this basis of K, dj, with this basis of P, x, y. And you get this very well-known Casimir operator. Okay.
And this, of course, will have uh, the corresponding minimum eigenvalue, lambda tau. The minim, minimum eigen, eigenvalue of the spectrum of this C tau. And take also the maximum eigenvalue. Actually, the, the multiples of the identities is zero, so we have to take the traceless operators to get something. Okay. These eigenvalues are well known, they are in the books, okay? But then what we were able to prove with Emilio is the following uh, lemma. Saying that this, that it looks like the Casimir is very related with this real Casimir. So, what we prove is that C tau in a symmetric operator of the form like this, so only on P, A plus P, is given by something here, it doesn't matter. But here you have the Casimir of the isotropy representation plus twice the Lignerovich Laplace. Recall that in our case, since it's, it's Einstein, this Casimir operator is kappa times the identity of P. Okay, so you have two kappa a plus two the operator we want to know about the minimum eigenvalue. But then with this lemma, we get the following here. The following crit criterion. If two lambda max tau so is it, this will be a completely Lie theoretical condition okay. a pure algebra condition then you get that this standard metric is g step From a, from a very algebra, a theoretical condition, which is easy to compute, you get the G stability of, and so you are getting local max of at least the functional restricted to the G invariant. And so you are getting, what you are getting are candidates for the big question, which is this one. They are candidates because they are of suction. They are it's necessary to have this to have these local max which were unknown after so many years. And okay, the <coughs> this oh, this applies to fourteen of, of twenty cases with G exceptional, not classical, but exceptional simply group. And so we, we got for free 14 local max for free, without any other computation. And and well the then people working on on, on this general case, which is since the metric is homogeneous, of course, to obtain this is still representation theory. So this is harmonic analysis of homogeneous space. Okay, you have the L2, the multiplicities, all, all the Frobenius, Freudenthal, 
all, all the usual. Huh? And so, uh, let's mention uh, Schwann. Very recent results by Schwann. That uh, many of these, many of these, like, like dozens, are actually st stable in the general case. Non-symmetric, stable examples of Einstein matrix. Okay. The the it's interesting that that the the method well, the, the method by, by, by Sean is, uh, involves some, of course, computer. Involves some com uh, computer uh, software. But uh, it's like he, his method can be applied to all the levels except for this level. Okay? So it's, it's, it's not that our G stability follows from his method is that both things added gives the, the, the general stability. So it's like a, at this level, which is the, the zero level of, of this L2, eh, uh, it's, it's like a very different problem in, in, this, in this G invariant directions. Okay. And so then many many examples this is kind of unexpected many many examples of, of local max so very very distinguished einstein metrics and far from symmetric spaces and okay thank you very much okay.